Photography as a hobby can be quite difficult to keep fresh and motivating. So in today's video, I wanted to share five mindsets or attitudes, if you will, that if you incorporate, adopt or include in your lifestyle and photography, I think, and they've definitely worked for me, they can help keep photography a long-term hobby that lasts forever without too much frustration. This may be one of those videos where I give a lot of advice and don't take many photos. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm trying to be somewhat quiet because it is 8 a.m. and I did come here today to photograph a big ruin that's behind this that you can see behind me, but I just walked round it and no kidding, there is some people camping inside of the ruin. So they've got a fire burning and everything. I'm not gonna disturb them. It might be a case of having a little look around this area, around the outskirts and then moving on somewhere else. I've got a few more places to visit today. So yeah, I was not expecting that. Okay, so the first mindset that I've become really comfortable with or attitude that I've become really comfortable with and I mean above everything else when it comes to photography is being perfectly fine with the fact that you won't and you don't always have to come back from every single photo shoot that you go on with incredible image. You don't even have to come back with any images at all that you like. I've said this phrase on my channel before in the past in a really old video, but when it comes to photography, the lessons tend to come after the exam. And what I mean by that is you can look at going out and taking photos as the exam and the lessons then come afterwards when you can get home, analyze what did and didn't go well. Beginners, hobbyists and professionals that are really okay with that sentiment that you don't always have to get a great photo every time you go out with your camera are way more likely to stick to it as a hobby, I think anyway. And why is that? Because they don't get a few years into practicing photography and doing photography as a hobby and then think to themselves, right, I've kind of mastered everything else now. There's nothing to learn. I've learned camera settings. I've took some good photos and I've done it all. And anything that goes wrong, they'll then blame on the conditions on the day or not having the right camera gear or needing that particular lens. And I think that often leads to people putting their camera gear down or practicing it very, very few and far between, like a few times a year or something. Right, well, that was pretty annoying. I was really looking forward to photographing that ruin over there, but there's no way I'm venturing into somebody's campsite at 8 a.m. in the morning. So it's all good. I've got a couple more spots I wanna check out today. Another ruin that's further north up here. So let's get up there. I need to grab something to eat and a coffee on the way. So I'm gonna get back to the car, get on the road. We'll go check out that other ruin. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna to get to it, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so next tip for this video, as I absolutely ramble through this field for my next little photo spot, is to make yourself a photography priority list. And what I mean by that is putting everything you do in terms of your photography and your photography journey or hobby, whatever you want to label it, putting it in order of most important to least important. So for example, mine at the minute would probably look something a bit like this. With actually going out and taking photos and practicing photography and making YouTube videos right at the very top and posting on Instagram and keeping up with social media right down at the bottom. I'll explain the reasoning behind making a priority list in a minute, but I just wanna say as well, you can change this list and mix it around at any time you want. So let's say December comes around, it's cold and dull and you're not really feeling going out to shoot and you swap updating your website and your website galleries and the copywriting and stuff on your website right to the top of your priority list and it can stay there until you no longer want it to be a priority or you've completely finished the task. Uh, there's a bunch of cows behind me in the field and I'm walking that way so I hope they can't access the field that I'm in because one of my fears is being trampled by cows and being left for nobody to find me. <laughs> anyway, a visual aid like a priority list for me is one of the most powerful ways for any creative outlet really, or even professional work as well. Maybe even your day job, you make a priority list. But basically what it does is it allows you to see the stuff at the bottom and be okay with the fact that 
you haven't really got time for them at the minute, but you remember them, you know they're down there and you know you want to get around to it eventually, but you're all right with the fact that the, the top two, three maybe, at the top of the list are the ones you're going to work on and focus right now and pour most of your energy into. And the reason I say uh, being okay with relaxing and chilling out is because there's a psychological feeling called leisure time guilt. If you've never heard of it, give it a quick Google, but in short, it's people that have a really, really hard time with not being productive or resting or socializing or leisure stuff. They have a hard time because they feel guilty when they do relax, when they do chill, when they watch a movie, anything like that, that there is more productive things they can be doing. Now, I have a really, really, really hard time dealing with the feeling of leisure guilt, and I'm sure possibly anybody else that's really creative or on an endeavor to build something creatively or they're on a real pursuit for a hobby i'm sure they suffer with similar feelings as well so that's why i bring the priority list up even though it may be small it has been one of the biggest aids for me in being okay with chilling out once i know i've got a couple of tasks at the top of the list done i've practiced a bit of photography i've edited a video i've uploaded a video and then i'm like all right cool i'm gonna have a couple of days chill family time friends time stuff like that walk the dog and not feel guilty so this is the other sort of ruin i wanted to come and check out today it was part of a world war ii defenses which a lot of this coastline is it's where the bunkers and stuff are that i've shown in previous videos um thought it might make a nice photo but when it comes to shooting buildings and stuff can you see how the right hand side all the sun is hitting that therefore there that is where the highlights are in the frame. And the front of the building is currently in shadow, apart from obviously as you look through the windows and the bits that are peeking up and hitting the side light from the sun. Now the problem is here, I would want the front of the building to be the bit that's being lit up and the side being shadows. I don't like it when it's all lit up because then there's no dimension to the frame. I don't like it when it's all in shadow because then again, there's no dimension to the frame. So what you want, you do want this split split ratio of shadows and highlights but they're the wrong way around for me <laughs> if i take this frame here just a quick snapshot position it quite low that blue sky at the top nice and minimal you'll hopefully see what i mean by that photograph it does depend on what you want out of the photograph you might have something really awesome on the highlight side that you want to show off but in my case i don't so that is the situation. The long and winding road. Dun, 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 dun. This may be one of those videos where I give a lot of advice because obviously I'm giving these five mindsets and attitudes uh, and don't take many photos, which I always hate because it looks like you're giving advice and you can't back it up with good photos, but it goes back to my point number one. <laughs> You're not always gonna get good photos on every photo shoot that you go on. But I'll tell you what, while, I, while I'm here, while I'm stood with this nice safe view behind me, <laughs> let's go on to the next tip, which is hyping up small wins. And I've got a little bit of a story for this one. So a few months back, I took this photograph. And this image is one of my favorites I've taken in a long, long time. I think possibly my favorite this year so far as well. Uh, and I kind of knew that on the back of the camera when I took it. And I drove home after taking it, uh, shouted my girlfriend. I said, come and look at this photograph that I've taken. She was like, oh, that's amazing, really nice. I edited it up, you know, I saw family a few weeks later, I showed my dad, showed people at work and they were all pretty pumped on it. I thought it was an awesome image. And uh, it also actually, sparked a project idea going forward for me in terms of the style of that photograph but um i say all that basically to say don't wait for 200 print sales or social media recognition or a viral post or a viral video to acknowledge success in any area of your photography you need to acknowledge and hype up the very small wins in order to keep photography exciting and fresh as a hobby and really appreciate something that you've done maybe you've just mastered a little new camera setting maybe you've finally got a photo that you've been trying to get for a few weeks 
maybe you tried macro photography and you got a, a nice macro shot of a flower that you really, really like. Taking pride in these small stepping stones, these small little mini side quests, if you will, and sharing them with family and friends, actually making a deal of it when you've done something, or even if it's just, you know, you're keeping it to yourself, but you feel good about it, will lead to you staying motivated, inspired and happy with photography as a hobby, because otherwise it's going to feel like a daunting task that you're not really progressing at that you know can be a bit frustrating i recently uh, went back and reconfigured both of my cameras set them all up in different ways to how i shoot now and that took a couple of hours to be fair especially when you have to like go back and forth and save all the settings but anyway i say that because after that i said to myself you know what that's something i've needed to do for a really long time it's going to benefit me when it comes to taking photos when i'm out it's going to make me faster more accurate and i'm going to acknowledge that as something that i did small win i'm not going to jump on social media and shout about it but i felt good about it and it kept me motivated for the week going forward to try out the new settings and like I say these little small wins these little stepping stones often lead to bigger ideas and bigger concepts down the line as well Just coming away from those noisy waves for a minute for this next one just in case the audio is rubbish up there but the uh the next one is editing with intention because something that used to paralyze my photography a lot a few years ago was worrying about getting the edit right the first time and in worrying about that i'd end up not really editing anything so the worst thing about this is because i had such a backlog of images that i felt like i had to get right first time because i was spending way too long editing them maybe like i say being paralyzed and not really editing them at all or just messing around in lightroom figuring out trying to figure out what direction i wanted to go with the photos it would mean i was spending less time out of my camera taking new photos because in fact, I'd spend months, months at a time, not actually going out and using my camera because I had such a backlog of photos and I was worried about capturing more before I edited the ones that I'd already captured, especially if I'd gone on like a big trip or on holiday or something and I had thousands of images to get through. That would leave me in a, in a conscious state of a decision for months, which is never good when it comes to creative things. So the mindset I would encourage you to adopt is to just keep remembering and keep telling yourself that one, you don't have to nail the edit first time. You don't have to do the photo as much justice as possible first time around because you can go back and re-edit them anytime you want. And it's perfectly normal three, four, five years, however many years down the line that you're going to want to go back and re-edit your photos anyway because your style changes. And then to help aid this so that you don't feel like you're wasting too much time on rubbish edits, just try and have a clear idea in your head of what you want that photo to say and what look what style you want on that photo from the outset instead of opening it and not knowing how you want it to look and just moving sliders around and trying to find something that looks pleasing try and have an idea in your head before you even start moving those sliders around because uh, that's going to save you loads of time and probably get you better results in the long run as well okay so lastly to cap off this video i wanted to say try to remember that your photography your photos belongs to you sadly the photography community now more than ever with how much we are online these days does have a hell of a lot of elitists that will sit behind the computer screen and say this is right this is wrong if you're not shooting this way you're doing it incorrect and you should do it how i do it your composition's wrong your framing's wrong etc etc which is fine and i would absolutely encourage anyone to stay open to conversations and opinions and advice and have these back and forths with other photographers because it helps everyone get an understanding of how each other work but after that it's then your choice whether you want to take that on board like i say with all my videos it's completely up to you whether you want to take that advice and carry it over to your work just because someone else says it that's been doing it longer than you or maybe has some nicer images than you that doesn't mean that it's going to work for you so do not feel pressured by the high presence of people that act like that on social media and online and maybe even in person because like i say your photography belongs to you you don't want to feel pressured to even post your photos if you don't want to you don't have to show all of your photos you can keep some of them to yourself 
don't feel pressured to be photographing what's hot at the minute. Don't feel pressured to photograph a certain genre because that's what everyone seems to be enjoying. There will be times where you feel like picking up your camera and you're really inspired and there will be times where you cannot be bothered and you can't bear the thought of going out with your camera and that's perfectly fine. You do not have to be creating art every single day to be considered an artist. So long story short, your photography belongs to you. Do not feel pressured. Photography should not be a pressure. It should be an enjoyment. And that is the last mindset that I've adopted and I think may help other photographers out there too. With all that being said, if you'd like 10 more powerful photography tips, then I recommend checking out this video here next. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.